Hey everyone, this is Mark. How are you? I am in the car again. This seems like a really good place to chat to the video because I'm driving. I don't have to look at this. I'm not looking at the, the camera. Um, but it, this is when I'm thinking about stuff on driving to work or driving to a meeting. So it's a good opportunity for me to, to chat on my blog. So uh, this is sort of a departure. I'm not talking about health today. I'm talking about Japanese. And um, as you probably saw in the title of this video. And uh, this semester, I decided to take a leave of absence from school to reduce stress and focus on my work. Uh, but I did want to take the time to study something that was interesting to me. So I decided to study Japanese. <clears throat> now, I've had, I've been studying Japanese off and on, more off than on, but off and on since high school. Um, I took three years in high school, been to Japan a bunch of times, maybe like 30 or 40 times. <clears throat> My mom's from Japan, although we only spoke English when I was a kid. And, uh, oh, change lanes. and um, I st took a year, year and a half in, in college. Uh, and then I didn't touch Japanese uh, for another four or five years, four or five years. And then I studied pretty intensely for about six months in my mid-20s when I was in San Francisco. And then I um, uh, studied again later on, but it, it, it wasn't ever, uh, I never maintained it for very long. And my Japanese is at this weird place, the level I'm at. It's, I'm not a beginner because I've been doing it for a while and I've been around it for a while. I'm, I'm conversational. It's about the same level as my Chinese. So, um, but I'm not fluent by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it's at this weird place. I'm, I'm sort of like, a, a, I don't know, maybe a fourth or fifth grader that uh, has a learning, <laughs> learning challenge or something because uh, there's a lot of words... I don't know how to say. I, when I hear them, I understand them, but then I, I forget how to say them. My dad calls this passive language, so my understanding is better than my speaking. Um, and in the last week and a half, I, I had a bunch of credits on italki.com, which is a site that matches you up with tutors in different languages. And so I just had language sessions with Japanese tutors, uh, conversation partners, maybe one every day or two, day and a half, over the past week or so, so maybe eight different tutors I've been talking to just to practice speaking in Japanese. And I'm able to hold a 30-minute conversation completely in Japanese without any English. 30, 45 minutes, probably could do an hour if I, depending on the topic. Um, so it's at the weird stage where, so when, when I, I, I'm doing a roundabout way to get to what I wanted to talk about, but when I talk, um, when I watch Japanese television, which I've been doing more recently, I started watching some dramas on Netflix and, and some TV shows, uh, Terasa House, if you know Terrace House, they had one in Hawaii, so I've been watching that, it's very, very interesting. Um, uh, and uh, more and more I'm able to watch it without the subtitles. I'm, I'm starting to, like if I watch without subtitles of just a standard conversation, as long as the vocabulary isn't too complex, they're not talking about crazy philosophy or science or something. Um, I can understand about 80% of what they're talking about. Um, so that's kind of nice. I mean, it, I can see it, even over the last week and a half, that it's been improving. And I, more and more I can watch without subtitles. I can understand what, what's being said more and more. And that's kind of nice. And more and more I'm able to recall the words that I want to be able to say. Um, that I remember having learned at one time, but maybe I've forgotten what they meant now. Um, uh, like, uh, what's a good example? Uh, I can't think of one now. <laughs> that totally uh, so, anyway, the whole point of this was that I was trying to think of, if I'm going to be studying Japanese, I want to make sure I have a, a method or a system. There was a, a blog post by James Clear where he talks about how goals are actually counterproductive. They're actually not effective. I mean, you should have a goal, but focusing on your goal is actually not productive to productivity. It's better to focus on the system uh, of that. So, for example, instead of focusing on 
um, I want to write a book, um, instead focus on the practice of writing each day. So each day you're going to write, I don't know, five pages of something. And over the course of time, eventually you will have, you will have written a book. But if you focus on just the day-to-day practice of writing, you will reach that goal without even really trying to reach that goal. Um, I mean, because you're focusing on the practice. So it's better to focus on the practice than to focus on the goal. Think of it this way. When you think about the goal, basically until you reach that goal at some arbitrary point in the future, you're constantly in a state of lacking that goal. So you're lacking the completion. You have not completed this goal. You're in a state of um, not being done which is uh, very disheartening for a lot of people. So you have this goal, and all you can think about while you're working towards that goal is the fact that you haven't reached it yet. Whereas if you make your purpose or your goal um, to practice each day, just to spend the practice each day, maybe 10, 15 minutes on that thing that is eventually you have that goal for. So if it's, for example, you want to learn a language, maybe... You spend half an hour a day or an hour a day just reviewing flashcards and watching videos. And that's your practice. Eventually, you will get better at that language and become get to the level you want to get to. But it's the practice that's essential. So in thinking about learning Japanese, I'm trying to think about, well, what is my goal? I mean, not, what is my goal? Yeah, my goal is fluency. But what is my, which is an arbitrary term to start with. But... Um, What is my practice? What is my system of practice for Japanese? Um, There's there's four elements to learning a language. Uh, Speak, uh, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. And for me, uh, I've, and and I've actually talked about this before. Did I? I must have somewhere. Uh, But the, the most challenging part for most people is speaking because that's where all the fear is. Second is writing, because writing in a language, especially one that's uh, challenging with, you know, all the cr- crazy characters and hiragana and katakana and kanji and everything for Japanese um, or Chinese, writing is also challenging. In a language like Korean, writing is much easier because the, it's, it's a phonetic-based alphabet or um, any phonetic-based alphabet is much easier to learn writing in, but for Japanese, that is not the case. Um, so writing is challenging. And um, but a, a good way to improve your speaking and your writing is also through listening and reading. That's your input. Listening and reading is your input. Writing and speaking is your output. So if you want to improve your ability to have a good output, you also need to focus a bit on the input. I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> so a long story short, I've been thinking about what will be my system and I had put up a, a random topics vlog last year about my current language learning system. And at that time, I was thinking about learning Indonesian. And I had started a little bit with that. Um, and when I'm starting a language from scratch, it's a different project than starting a language from conversational ability. Because I'm not... Um, uh, starting from scratch, it's much easier, actually, for me, because you have to learn the same things for every language. My, uh, and, and the way I do it is I, I first learn a conversation talking about myself, introducing myself. That's where I, I first start. And then from there, I work into topic-based um, convers- uh, areas. So it, the first paragraph I, I learn will be, Hi, my name is Mark. I'm 47 years old. I live in Hawaii. I'm a web designer. I'm married. My wife's name is Ruhi. I live here, I do this, here's my hobbies, that kind of thing, right? So that sort of um, general introduction, I I could already do that in Japanese. So now now I'm thinking, well, where are my deficiencies in Japanese? And how do I plug up those deficiencies? My My main deficiency is vocabulary. And every time I would meet with a Japanese tutor, at the end of the lesson, I would ask them, um... So in, in my Japanese, what is the worst part of my Japanese? Bumpo toka, grammar, kotoba toka, hatsun toka. All except for one, said my hatsun, my pronunciation is okay. 
uh, which just comes from being around Japanese for so long. Um, the biggest one was uh, kotoba, my, my vocabulary. So um, diang in Chinese. My, my vocabulary is limited. And that's um, one of the biggest ones. And they also, a few said that my ability to connect sentences needs work. Like um, using like tara or... Um, or you know the, the, the verb endings like that connect sentence ideas between different uh, sentences, um, and apparently that's that's the one of my deficiencies. So I'm finding parking, by the way. Um, where is the parking? Oh, here's the parking. So that makes me that was very helpful because it made me realize okay, my main deficiency then is I need to be able to. Um, I need to work on my vocabulary, which is flashcard work, essentially, and being able to remember that vocabulary in a, in a conversation, and then being able to connect sentences. I have simple sentences down. That's not a problem. This is a pen. Um, I think this is good. Um, I want to. Uh, I want to go to work. You know, stuff like that. That's that's not a problem. But connecting ideas together, like. Um, um, for example, a sentence that would be really hard for me to say is, uh, if you go to the bank, could you do me a favor and make a deposit uh, into my savings account so I can pay rent next week? I could string that into simple sentences, but that whole thing as a, as a complex sentence would be really hard for me. Um, I don't know what the word for savings account is. Savings account. <laughs> but uh, anyway, oh, 11 minutes. Um, this is longer than I meant it to be. Uh, but I'm going to be thinking about that, my, my, my approach. And I think it's going to be a combination of um, speaking practice, maybe once a week with a tutor, flashcards, working on vocabulary sp- related to specific topics, and working on sentence combining grammar and uh, ability to uh, conjugate verbs more effectively. There's still some verb conjugations I have I struggle with, like the sasirareru, sasirareru, and... Um, uh, certain things like that. So I'm going to work on, on, on that and figure out a game plan. And then I'll let you guys know what my game plan is. But I just thought I'd, you know, talk out loud a little bit about what I want to do with Japanese. Uh, if you speak Japanese, feel free to provide some suggestions. Um, and I know my mom and dad will provide some suggestions anyway, because they both speak Japanese. Um, but it's really just getting down and practicing and, and speaking and, and uh, doing it, doing the work. So um, I'm not going to commit a huge amount of time to Japanese, maybe an hour or two a day at the most, um, maybe five days a week. So it's not going to be a full-time thing. Um, but I just wanted to have something to sort of occupy my mind with that isn't work-related. Uh, because I also study things for work and I, and I learn things, uh, design-related things for work but and business things. But... I wanted to do something more just for myself. Anyway, that's it for today, um, or for now. And uh, I'm here at the office I'm going to work at, and uh, I will talk to you guys later. Hope everyone's doing great, and uh, have an awesome day. See ya.